Hey, hey, hey! Welcome back to another Prairie Sunset Ranch Farm vlog. I'm Aaron the Beef Baron, and thank you for tuning in, my friends. But what can I say? The storm is over. The blizzard of a decade has passed on. It is clear sailing now. Beautiful sun out. The calves are just chillaxing. Things are as it should be at the cow ranch. <laughs> But with the storm moving out, we still had a lot of stuff to take care of. I'm going to touch base on it right now. One of our first time calvers, she was at a standstill with her birth. She could not give birth to her big old linebacker beefcake of a calf. So we had to jump in and we had to assist and pull the calf for her. Uh, with her, I should say. So I'm going to show you how we assist and pull calves with uh, nothing but an a soft ratchet strap in an open area. It's pretty simple. I like using this soft restraint due to the fact it reduces injuries to the calf and the cow, but there's a certain strategy you gotta use when pulling a calf. You don't just torque it out. So I'm gonna go through the steps quickly. For those of you who might not know how we pull a calf safely and securely here on this farm. We rarely ever have to use it, but I do want to quickly show you the different uh, parts of our calf puller if we ever had to use it. I want to show you why I try to stay away from the puller as much as possible. There are certain circumstances where that calf won't come out and you can't uh, pull them out just using manpower. You have to use the, the pulling tool. So I'm going to quickly, briefly just show you guys what is uh, composed of a calf puller, at least an old school one. So let's check that out too. This leads me to my next area of business. No, that's not my pet dog. That is a calf. This is a calf born in the midst of that blizzard in the barn. Dropped next to another calf or two. And the mother never claimed them. So we do have a call somewhere. There's a call in here. I got to sort it out. I don't know if I'll sort it out this video, but we're going to feed this little guy couple bottles because he looks hungry to me. Look at him. Doesn't know what's going on. He's just sucking anything. So we got to take care of that little guy. We have a lot of other things to do in between here. This cow ranch never rests. So that's enough chit chat, Aaron. Let's pit her, pat her and get at her. Woo! Oh, <laughs> little guy. What are you doing, maniac? <laughs> What can I say? I got a pet heifer, I guess. <laughs> well, it is 24 hours after the storm has packed up and buggered off. So it's fairly nice out now. Probably about minus one, close to zero right now. Last night was minus 20 apparently, or minus 18 with the wind chill. <clears throat> the sun's out, it's nice. So anyways, I just went to take a peek at the heifer calves, checking all them, they're all fine, but I got a First time calver in labor. I saw some hooves. Looks like she's given her help, but I don't know if she might need some help. We're gonna go check on her, make sure the calf is passing. Uh, if I can see a nose. All I saw was the uh, the hooves. You never know what to expect, even though the rest of the girls have been calving really well on their own. There's always one or two to ruin the party. Let's get at her. Well, if you enjoy these episodes of Prairie Sunset Ranch where Aaron bays in a variety of cattle birthing fluids, make sure you hit that thumbs up and uh, please consider subscribing. Let's get back to work, peeps. Thank you kindly. Uh, the wind has died down finally after a, a full week of wind and man, crazy. But everything looks quite well. The calves all look great, but we're going to be quiet here. We're going to go take a peek at that. Uh, that big girl that was in labor here. Hi girl. Hello. I'm gonna bug her off. I'm gonna give her a few minutes. <clears throat> I'm gonna let her try. She doesn't look like she's struggling. She's uncomfortable. I can still see the hooves. If we have to help, we will. Last resort. I want it to come natural. We're gonna get out of there for a little while. Give her some alone time. We'll keep an eye on the situation. I'm gonna hang out here. These guys are waiting for the big melt. All the animals 
had a rough go with this last little batch. Ooh, it's angry bull calf. Hey, angry. <laughs> God, I love those pissed off guys. For your eyes only, here's a quick little diagram of a cow's birth canal with a calf sitting in it, just so uh, my explanation makes sense to you. So obviously you got the cow that looks like a rhino or something. But anyways, this would be a normal calf presentation. You have the head tucked between the legs, right? So you got the hooves, legs. You got the calf. You got the cow. This is the udders, but this is the canal here. Pelvis, etc. So this is how it's going to be positioned in the cow, roughly, give or take. <laughs> You know, after much time observing and monitoring the situation, I decided I had to jump in and intervene. First off though, I had to get the cow out of that corner. I can't assist her in the corner as there's no room to work and it's not safe for, for the calf nor I to be uh, crammed in the corner. So we had to get her up, get her into a safe area, and I got out my soft ratchet strap. That is my choice for pulling calves. I've pulled numerous calves using these, um, a clean, soft ratchet strap uh, around the, above the joints of the calf and uh, really it decreases the amount of injuries and trauma to both the calf and the mother cow. So let's get into this. I'll explain it a little more as we go along. Hooves. Well, I noted that I saw the calves' tongue sticking out to the side. The head started to get swollen, so it was go time. We had to help this cow out. So when pulling a calf by hand, you're going to want to pull that calf down towards the cow's feet initially. And you're going to want to gradually angle it towards her belly. And what this is going to do is this is going to angle the calf's hips upward in the pelvic opening of the cow. The pelvic opening up top is the widest point of the cow's uh, cavity. So at this point, the resistance should decrease and the calf should come out given a normal uh, birthing position. Now my first couple uh, little tugs here, I wasn't at the perfect angle. The reason I wasn't at the perfect angle is I, I was pushed up against the wall there. So I had to give myself some room. So I went from the back a little more than I would have liked. But after, uh, as you see, as the calf comes out, I angle myself down towards the cow's feet and then the belly. And then it popped out really nice without, uh, with really minimal resistance. Let me go. Let me go. A push. Oh. Okay, one more, one more big push, 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 push. Make sure you time your pulls with the cow's pushes so it comes more natural. Very important point. Good girl, good girl. When placing the uh, strap, I like to go at the narrowest part of the leg above, leg above the joint. And then if you can, loop it again around just beneath the dew claw. Uh, in this case, I didn't have time. The tongue was sticking out. She had to come out. Uh, and it wasn't a big, heavy pull. So I knew I wasn't going to do damage. Yep. That was a big one. Never. First time calf would never get that out. Without a pull. Holy. Holy. Good girl. Good girl. Big guy. Just gonna make sure. Hi, mama. Yeah. Just make sure he's all right. I'm gonna make sure his nose is clear. Oh. Now you get to work. There we go. Well, there you have it. Got her out. I don't even know if it's a girl or a boy. I'll have to check after. I don't want to bother her anymore. But another big head. It's another big head. This is bigger than the other one. So I was worried about. You can just tell by looking at his nose. It's huge. 
I'm gonna guess by the looks, this is probably a, bet you it's a bull calf. Hi, Mama. That's my cat. Holy, that's a heifer. Now, its face could be a little bit swollen. It wasn't stuck very long. I just left about 20 minutes ago. Came back. Boom. Ready, it's go time. So, we're just gonna lock this up. We're gonna keep her locked up in here. That calf's gonna be fine. Now, it's very important when I pull, I don't just pull straight back. You can hurt the mom. You could tell I didn't hurt her at all. She jumped right up, boom. She's also very young. But you kind of pull same direction as the birth canal. Down and away, and you try to pull when she's pushing. Uh, you don't want a reef on it. It should come out. All it needs is just a little tug, you know? You don't want to You don't want to reef it out. You don't want to turn green and just hammer, put the hammer down, because you can do a lot of uh, harm to the mother and the calf. Well, not only have I noted that, that our uh, heifer calves are, are coming out really like brute, they're like brutes, they're like linebackers. You can, it's hard to distinguish a heifer calf from a bull calf this year. It's really kind of funny. Normally you can tell. Last few years prior, I could almost just pick them out as they're dropping. You could be like, yeah, that's probably a heifer calf or that's probably a bull calf. But these heifer calves are coming out really, really thick. They're really beefy. It's kind of funny. We're going to have a good uh, selection of replacements, that's for sure. But we don't just pick on sheer frame, uh, size of the frame and, and everything. There's a there's a, a bunch of variables that, that take place, you know. It has to have a good mother, has to have good temperament, um, you know, etc., etc. Has to be vigorous at birth, has to suck word away without us intervening. intervening. So, but... Uh, you know, secondly, I did note there's a lot more heifers than bull calves this year. I don't know. I think we're probably sitting at 65, 35 around for uh, heifers and, and bull calves. Kind of surprising, maybe 60, 40, but it's probably like 65, 35. Let me know in the comment box below. Do you find variations in your calf sizes? Do you ever note things like this? Like this year alone, I noted that the heifers are a lot bigger than they have been prior. There we are. There we are. Calves up and about. Mom looks great. Look at that. Hey, pretty girl. So, did it suck yet? Yeah, it sucked already. Monster. Look at this big guy. Big girl. Big girl. Hey. All right, we're gonna open up the door. We'll let him be, looks fine. She sucked, her udders cleaned off, wrinkled. She loves it. We will leave it at this. And I really do wanna urge, basically your first step in pulling a calf, really think of using just manpower. A pull by hand sometimes is all you need. Rarely do we ever need to use a mechanical tool to pull a calf, but sometimes it does come down to it, and it depends on the breed of cattle. Red Angus really aren't tanks. They typically have smaller heads, smaller features. They're a little bit easier birthing. So that's one reason we do raise uh, Red Angus on this farm, but there you go. This chain would be put around the front legs of the calf when you're pulling it. We use this old lasso sometimes if we have to hold the cow in place if we're in an open area. But it just loops through there and it, you pull it and it tightens around the legs. And basically you got the puller here with the hook. All right. And it ratchets. Right. So this ratchets. So basically this goes on that end. And that will be against the mother. 
I'll be against the mother for leverage. One side's gonna be hooked to the calf, one to the mother. When you ratchet that, so one side will be hooked, the harness to one side, that'll be where the mother is. That will be hooked to the calf side. When you leverage it, it will pull on the legs of the calf. It basically produces leverage and pulls the calf out. And that's why I don't like using it. Hopefully we never, we don't have to use it this year. I've used it once in the last probably six years. It's not fun. It's really uncomfortable. I really dislike using it, but sometimes you have to do it and I get it. And there's people who have big calves that have to use it on a regular basis. And I'm not saying that's wrong or bad. You're not doing a bad job. It's just different breeds, etc., etc. Our calves are smaller than a lot of other guys. So we don't have to pull as many calves, luckily. Well, in last weekend's video, Albert gave me the name Buckwheat and I laughed. I really liked it. So Albert, seeming you were the successful candidate in naming Buckwheat the heifer, that's my pet's heifer calf. <laughs> Fire me an email at sales at prairiesetsatranch.com. We're gonna try to get you a, a hat or something. So talk to you later. Oh, Buckwheat's going through the car wash. Get an old uh, supreme cleaning. Good old waxing, hey? <laughs> Oh, I got a couple pints of uh, cow colostrum. Goofball. This little guy, he's getting a milk replacement now for calves, but he did get, uh, he got about, uh, what was it? Uh, two helpings of fresh cow's colostrum that we had frozen in, uh, in bottles in the freezer. So we actually milked out a couple cows there last year. So he got two, uh, about a thousand mLs, about a liter of, of good cow, real cow colostrum, so he gets those antibodies, so. I'm now officially his mother, I guess. Sheesh. <laughs> uh, guy can't win sometimes. Well, just like uh, yellow number two there, born in the, the midst of that blizzard. I don't know who its mother is, normally we document it all. This is one that was lost in, uh, <laughs> in the whole mix of things. But uh, what do you typically do if you're a cattle owner, cattle rancher, what do you do with a calf like that? You know, we're obviously gonna try to pair it up to his mother. Mother's probably a call, even if uh, we do pair him up because she didn't claim him off the hop. But there's a lot of confusion. In the comment box below, let me know, how would you deal with that uh, yellow number two unclaimed calf? Would you bottle feed it? Would you feed it and sell it as a bottle calf? Would you try to raise it as a pet? I don't know. Breed it, uh, you know, raise it with a bottle, mm, breed it or sell it or whatever. Let me know what you think. Huh, Aaron, what happened to you? Well, I wasn't doing graffiti on the barns. <laughs> what I'm actually doing is, uh, I just checked on the heifers and I saw a bunch of the calves nursing. So what I'm gonna do is when I see a cow and a calf matched up, rather than looking for the ear tags and set, I'm just gonna put a shot of paint on the mother, just on her hind back. So I know she's paired up with one of the calves. I don't care what the calves sucking her. I just wanna find that number two, yellow two's mom. So if we can narrow it down to three, four cows, then hey, we got our mother, we got our possible call. So let's get as many as we can now. I'm gonna carry the paint with me while I feed up. And over the next two days, I should be able to get most uh, majority of them, probably. Hopefully, maybe, kind of, sort of, sometimes my plans work. <laughs> At least 20% of the time it works. <laughs> well, you don't have to worry. Aaron isn't using Rust-Oleum on the cattle. <laughs> We're using some livestock uh, paint marker. It's uh, water-based. It, it runs, it clear, cleans off after a little while. He's our first client. 
be here. Is this stuff in her? Perfect. Well, we know this is. That's her mama. Oh, good old Grace, baby. I know that's her baby. That's her baby. Narrowing it down. We're getting there, people. I wish my can was working. Stuck on. <laughs> well, I had a, a failure. My spray paint can blew up. <laughs> I guess I didn't take it in. Oh, perfect. Excellent. This is great. Anyways, <laughs> that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, I'm going to go get another can of paint. I'm not going to probably figure it out tonight, but, uh, or I'm not, probably not going to figure it out in time for this video. I'll let you know next weekend uh, what we found out with that calf. And hopefully my pans will go back to normal color. Or either that or I will morph into a large overgrown pear-shaped smurf. <laughs> you never know. But, uh, you know, basically what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go through all those girls just like that Boom, I caught I paired up it immediately about seven of them eight of them. No problem So I'm gonna try to get about another uh, Eight tonight and I'll really narrow it down. We should have a good idea who that uh, Who that uh, calf belongs to by uh, by tomorrow afternoon tomorrow evening I'm gonna go out at night before they suck before uh, sundown and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing I'm gonna take a can of paint with me to feed up and I'm gonna see if I can catch one or two here and there. I will. When I feed up isn't the best time because the cows are usually running around and everything, so I probably won't be able to match too much up there. But uh, that's what we're gonna do. They'll catch you next weekend's video with uh, the conclusion to this uh, scenario. I have a feeling it's one of those young, all red Angus girls, the dark red girls, one of the smaller ones, but I could be wrong. Well, just like that blizzard that rolled in, I am done. I am throwing in the towel. This is Aaron signing off. <laughs> we will catch you next weekend with an all new Prairie Sense Ranch Farm vlog. Be there or be square, my friends. Once again, have a fantastic week. We'll catch you then. Bye for now.